this will leave you speechless. Terence Howard is about to show you how the hidden rhythms of frequency shape our world. This is real, powerful, and it's all around us. So sit tight and let's dive in. Our DNA is made up of what? Five elements, right? Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. You know how they're arranged? The phosphorus sits right here in the middle and you've got four oxygen atoms surrounding it. Then there's another phosphorus, two more oxygen atoms. Now these are the legs of that double helix. These are the legs. Now the ladder steps on it, they become the adenine, the guanine, the cytonine, and thymine, thymine, the ATCGs. It turns out hydrogen, they used to think that energy the, the body transferred or understood the energy information through electricity. They're finding out it's through frequency. Well, guess what hydrogen sounds like? It's a key of E and it's a color yellow. That's what proper physics gets you to. Oxygen is a chartreuse and it's the key of F over F sharp. Now they used to, like I said, Information used to be thought about as just electrical information passing on. But I've got a question for you. Have you ever been at a party with some of your friends you ain't seen in 10 years, but y'all was like 14, you hung out and there's a song that came on and you like, ah, and everybody got up and was live at that moment. Now say 10 years later, you got a friend with you. He's a good guy, but he wasn't there when me and my boys formed this. So when that song comes on, our DNA tightens, tightens, tightens. There's a particular song, a scale in the genomes for each and every one of us. Now, when that song is played, when your particular prime resonant frequency is played, guess what happens? Your DNA celebrates and tightens. Everything else gets pushed out. Harmonic wave resequencing. The carbon is also the key of E and yellow. The nitrogen is G. And all these play a song. So say that the F over F sharps of the oxygen, the green, is only hitting at an, an F. Why? Because there's another frequency coming in from a generator over there. That's changing and causing it to change. The F hits the carbon. So the, instead of hitting as an F sharp, it hits as an F, so when it hits the carbon at an E, it doesn't hit it quite right, so the domino don't file right. So the next domino hits wrong. And so now we have a malformation happening within our DNA because the frequencies are being pushed off. But when we hear our tone, we tighten back up. So yeah, I'm in the process of building the harmonic wave resequencer with another doctor who has been able to successfully cure AIDS and cancer and it's well underway. But I wanted you guys to understand how that works. It's so simple. You do not need to tear the human body apart when all you can do is use frequency to bring it back to its normal space. More and more people are delving into the power of frequencies, and an increasing number are starting to believe in it, echoing the knowledge of ancient civilizations. It seems we're only just rediscovering what was long understood by earlier cultures. Perhaps this growing understanding sheds light on a significant shift in the music industry. The change in standard tuning of musical instruments from 432 hertz to 440 hertz. This subtle yet profound alteration begs the question, was this simply a matter of standardization or is there more to the story? The standard tuning pitch, often referred to as concert pitch, has varied throughout history. The tuning of A is equal to 432 hertz is said by some to be more harmonically aligned with the universe and the natural resonance of the human body. They often connect to ideas like those expressed by Terence Howard, suggesting that there's a harmonic language embedded within our DNA, waiting to be played in the right key. The shift to 440 hertz occurred around the early 20th century and has since become the accepted standard for tuning musical instruments. Some conspiracy theorists suggest this was done with the knowledge that it would cause disharmony, anxiety, and a more aggressive response in the population. They argue that this decision, allegedly spearheaded by figures like Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi minister of propaganda, was a form of psychological manipulation. Nevertheless, the debate rages on. 
On one side, there are music theorists, historians, and musicians who contend that the difference in frequency is too slight to affect human consciousness in the way conspiracists claim. On the other, there are those who feel that the difference resonates through every note, affecting mood, consciousness, and even physical health. The controversy surrounding the tuning of music raises a fundamental question. Why are frequencies so important? If the difference of a few hertz in tuning can be the subject of such intense debate, it suggests a belief in the intrinsic power of frequency that resonates through history. From the chants of Gregorian monks to the tuning of Tibetan singing bowls, this belief is not only cultural but also increasingly scientific, as researchers delve into the effects of sound on the human body and consciousness. The importance of frequencies in music might extend beyond mere preference or historical precedent. It taps into the very way our brains process sound waves, the vibrations they create, and how these can influence our emotional and physiological states. Some studies suggest that music tuned to certain frequencies may enhance mood or cognition, although more research is needed to establish definitive effects. As we ponder the implications of Terence Howard's assertions and the historical shift in music tuning, it becomes clear that to understand the full impact, we need to venture deeper into the science of sound. It's within the realms of acoustics, neuroscience, and even quantum physics that we can search for the answers to how and why frequencies might hold such sway over our well-being. In the following segment, we shall delve into the complexities of frequencies, examining the science behind their influence. From the molecular to the cosmic level, frequency is a fundamental aspect of our universe, and possibly a key to unlocking more harmonious states of existence. Let's dive into the science. Let's start small, with the atom. The concept that matter is not solid, but a cloud of potentialities comes from quantum mechanics. Electrons vibrate at specific frequencies determined by their energy levels, and these frequencies can be so exact that they define the identity of an atom. The atomic clock, a marvel of precision, is based on the vibrational frequency of cesium atoms, which is around 9,192,631,770 Hz, a frequency so stable that time itself is now defined by it. Moving into the biological domain, frequencies are equally critical. The human heart is a testament to this. The average resting heart rate sits between 60 to 100 beats per minute, each beat a frequency that can be affected by the slightest hormonal shift. Even brain function hinges on frequencies, with neural oscillations, brain waves, varying from the low delta frequency, 1 to 4 hertz, during deep sleep, to the high beta frequency. 13 to 30 hertz in active thought. Nikola Tesla famously quoted, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. His work on the alternating current system was a dance with frequencies, manipulating them to transmit energy across vast distances, changing the world forever. He speculated on the potential of frequencies to influence the physical world, with rumors of an experiment that nearly shook a building to its foundations using a small mechanical oscillator at a resonant frequency. The power of frequencies is evident not just in the transmission of energy, but in their potential for disruption when out of balance. For instance, the resonance frequency of human eye sockets is around 18 Hz, and exposure to this frequency can lead to discomfort and blurred vision. When architectural or natural frequencies align, as they did disastrously with the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in 1940, the consequences can be catastrophic. At the largest scale, Celestial bodies resonate with frequencies born from their mass and the force of gravity. The music of the spheres is not just poetic metaphor. Pulsars emit a detectable rhythmic frequency as they spin, and the sun resonates with helioseismic vibrations that help us understand its inner workings. As we delve into the profound implications of frequency, we realize that throughout history, many scientists and visionaries, from Tesla to modern researchers, have tried to convey the critical importance of frequencies. Yet, in the relentless pace of modern life, bombarded with a myriad of problems and distractions, these revolutionary insights often fade from public consciousness. 
It's as if the constant noise of our daily existence drowns out the subtle, yet profound, music of the universe that these figures have attempted to amplify for our collective benefit. This oversight might be one of our era's greatest follies, for if the universe is indeed composed of frequencies, then understanding and harnessing them could be transformative. Just as a single note played out of tune can ruin a symphony, a slight shift in the frequencies that govern our biological systems or our environment could have far-reaching consequences. Conversely, aligning with the correct frequencies might offer us unprecedented control over our health, technology, and the world around us. Throughout history, numerous individuals who have ventured beyond the conventional paradigms of science and society have often found their theories marginalized, their voices silenced. This pattern raises crucial questions about the nature of progress and the suppression of innovative ideas. Take, for instance, Nikola Tesla, whose profound genius revolutionized the world of physics and engineering. After his death, it's widely reported that many of his papers and research notes were confiscated by government agencies. The full extent of Tesla's work remained shrouded in mystery, fueling speculation that some of his revolutionary ideas were too transformative or too threatening to be released to the public. Similarly, the curious case of Royal Raymond Reif, who claimed his Reif machine could cure cancer with frequency therapy, was met with considerable skepticism and legal challenges, leading to the eventual downfall of his research. Critics argue his science was flawed, while supporters suggest his work was undermined by a medical industry that felt threatened by his claims. Moving into the realm of entertainment and social influence, actor Terence Howard presents a contemporary example. Known for his acting career, Howard's recent foray into the realm of alternative physics has been met with both intrigue and disdain. Whether his theories on the structure of DNA and its relation to frequencies hold water is subject to scientific scrutiny. Still, his abrupt descent from Hollywood raises eyebrows. It suggests a pattern where celebrities who diverge from their expected roles and advocate for radical ideas quickly find themselves ostracized. The pattern is disturbingly familiar, from Wilhelm Reich, who claimed his orgone energy discoveries could tackle diseases and was subsequently jailed, to more current figures like Dr. Judy Mikovits, whose controversial views on vaccines and virology have been staunchly opposed by the scientific community. These individuals often face a dichotomy. Either they are pioneers ahead of their time, or they are outliers whose theories simply do not align with empirical evidence. The issue at hand is not always about the validity of their claims, but the response they elicit. Society's discomfort with challenging the status quo often leads to the dismissal of ideas that deviate from the mainstream narrative. Is this a self-protective response from established institutions, or is it a mechanism that ultimately hinders progress by stifling innovation? Media's role in sculpting public consciousness cannot be understated, particularly when it intersects with health and science. Television and media, in their selective coverage, hold the reins on whether innovative ideas like the impact of frequencies on health are allowed into the mainstream or relegated to obscurity. The scant mainstream discussion of frequency therapies, despite historical and cultural precedents, points to a possible reluctance to explore paths that might disrupt established industries. The question then arises. Are we neglecting potential breakthroughs because they don't fit into the profit models of powerful entities? Moreover, the mockery or sensationalism that often greets these ideas in the media can undermine serious discourse and deter public interest. It creates an environment where only the already convinced seek out and engage with these theories, thereby preventing a broader dialogue. The intersection of sound and health is an intriguing area of study, one that is increasingly supported by empirical science. It's not merely about soothing melodies or the calming effect of a gentle voice, it's about measurable vibrations that interact with our biology in profound ways. Clinical studies offer a window into this world of therapeutic frequencies. For instance, sound therapy has been found to lower blood pressure and reduce migraine headache symptoms. In hospitals, the implementation of music therapy programs demonstrates marked improvements in patient recovery rates and pain management. 
The data is compelling. Certain frequencies can encourage the release of endorphins, the body's natural painkillers, and growth hormones, which are vital for repair and healing. This convergence of data and ancient practice becomes even more apparent when examining the use of high-intensity focused ultrasound in modern medicine. This technique employs sound waves to target tissue, such as tumors, effectively treating without incision. Similarly, transcranial magnetic stimulation uses magnetic fields to induce small electric currents in specific brain regions, treating depression with remarkable success. While not sound directly, it is another form of frequency application showing tangible, positive results on the human body. Turning to the psychological impacts of sound, specific frequencies and rhythms have been shown to evoke various emotional responses. In one study, participants exposed to 528 hertz sound waves reported more relaxation, joy, and creativity. This love frequency is believed to resonate at the heart of everything, connecting our spiritual essence to our material existence. While sound's healing potential is being harnessed for good, its darker applications lurk in the realm of control and manipulation. Sonic weapons, like long-range acoustic devices, can cause disorientation and pain, leveraging frequencies to maintain order or disperse crowds. But beyond these overt applications, there is a subtler form of auditory influence that permeates our daily lives. The concept of using sound to induce a state of fear is not new. Infrasound, at frequencies just below the range of human hearing, can create feelings of unease or discomfort. This principle is employed in various technologies, from the design of sound effects in horror movies to potentially less benign applications. News broadcasts and radio shows are often underscored with specific tones that may subtly influence the listener's emotional state. It's not just the content that can create anxiety or fear, it's the delivery mechanism itself. Fast-paced, high-pitched tones can create a sense of urgency or stress, while lower, drawn-out notes might induce a state of solemnity or concern. The power of this is not to be underestimated, as it can shape public consciousness and potentially manipulate societal responses to events and policies. The ethical implications of such uses of sound are immense. While we know that sound can heal, comfort, and restore, if misused, it has the potential to control or instigate distress. As we further understand the full capabilities of frequencies on our physiology and psychology, we must navigate the fine line between beneficial and harmful applications. The key will be in informed consent and ethical oversight, ensuring that the power of sound is respected and used for the collective good. The significance of self-education in this realm cannot be overstated. It is imperative for each of us to delve beyond the surface, to actively engage with the research, and to explore the science for ourselves. In an era where information is at our fingertips, yet so often filtered through a lens of corporate or political agendas, personal inquiry becomes a tool of empowerment. By seeking out these studies, engaging with the data, and questioning the narratives presented to us, we take control of our own understanding and, in turn, our health and well-being. As we navigate this landscape of sound and frequency, it's worth remembering that the marvels of modern science are echoes of ancient wisdom. Cultures across the globe have long turned to the vibrations of the Earth and the harmonies of the cosmos, seeking connection and healing. In this, perhaps we see the hand of the divine, a tapestry of natural remedies woven with intricate care awaiting our recognition and respect. God, in his greatness, has indeed left us many tools to enrich our existence. Sound, with its capacity to reach deep within the fabric of our being, is one such gift. Whether it's the soothing hum of a mother's lullaby or the precise frequency that disrupts a cancerous cell, the spectrum of sound's potential is as broad as it is profound. But to harness these tools, we must first acknowledge their existence and then have the courage to explore their applications. Awareness is the first step toward transformation. In being open to the unconventional, in challenging the status quo, and in seeking the truth with earnest intent, we invite new possibilities into our lives. We may not hear these truths broadcasted between the latest pop songs or discussed during primetime TV, but their whispers are there, between the lines of published studies and in the shared experiences of those who have dared to step beyond the conventional path. In closing, 
Let us take these whispers, these fragments of forgotten knowledge, and assemble them with both skepticism and hope. Let the tools left for us be handled with wisdom, and let us not be daunted by the silence of the mainstream. For in our quest for understanding, we might just discover the frequencies that resonate with our deepest potential. Harmonies that can tune not only our health, but the very essence of our lives.